Hello everyone and welcome to another video. How's everyone doing? Today we're still testing the recent nerfs with a twist, as we test them out against two tough matchups, Master Yi and Yumi. Both champions are hard to deal with, so this will be a solid opportunity to see how the new Volibear handles under pressure. Enjoy! In this game, we started with an early invade from the enemy team, which put a twist on things right from the start. Master Yi decided to start on the red side, and interestingly, we were both next to each other. I was doing raptors while he was doing red buff, and since we didn't run into each other, I assumed he'd head to Krug's next. The funny thing is, he is already on my blue buff. One thing for sure, Volibear at level 2 is an absolute beast. I haven't found any champion that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him in a 1 vs 1 at that stage and let's hope we never do. With our early dominance established, we know Master Yi is a champion who can bounce back in the mid and late game, even if he's behind. So, the more gold we accumulate early, the better positioned we'll be to shut him down later. To maximize this advantage, focusing on mastering a level 3 dive is key. Perfecting the level 3 dive is, in my opinion, one of the most essential skills for any jungler. But, once you reach the desired skill mastery, you'll have died so many times, hence I wish you good luck in your games before you master the level 3 dive. Since we're focusing more on ganking than farming in this game, Master Yi has been taking advantage of our absence by counter-jungling whenever he gets the chance. In these situations, I ask my teammates to ward up for vision, so we can try to catch him in the act and secure a few kills. But here's the frustrating part. When your teammates fall into tunnel vision, they focus solely on their own gameplay, farming and poking the enemy, instead of helping with the bigger picture. The irony is that if the enemy jungler is invading, we actually have a positional advantage. It's faster for our team to reach him than for his allies. Yet, my teammates don't always realize the edge they have, and often leave me out to dry. I've started to counter this by simply mirroring his counter jungle, letting him take what he wants on my side while I do the same on his. It's not the most aggressive strategy, but it's often the safest. And if we're lucky, we'll even catch him off guard once we regroup. At this point, I anticipated Master Yi to go full on and engage in a 1 versus 1 in the river, but instead, he stealthily snuck in and stole the Scuttle Crab with Smite. Here's the kicker. Knowing he's just used Smite actually gives us a tactical edge. Without it, he's less equipped to contest an objective, meaning we can now force a play on the map. By aiming for an objective like the Grubs, we can shift the fight to a more favorable part of the map. In League of Legends, and life really, pleasing everyone is near impossible. So, when I have allies who I simply can't help or gank effectively, I've found a sort of humorous ritual. I'll be there when they die. It's like holding a tiny, in-game memorial for the fallen, wishing them safe passage to the respawn. This seemingly pointless act actually works really well. It raises the ally morale and somehow manages to tilt the enemy team into oblivion. Sometimes just a bit of humor and act of kindness makes all the difference. This approach is surprisingly effective, so I recommend you try it as often as possible. To be honest, as Volibear, I don't need to be overfed to perform well. Ironically, if I am too fed, I often end up losing. I actually play best when I'm behind, so I purposefully put myself in disadvantageous situations to bring out my strongest gameplay. Some might call this a loser mentality, but sometimes it's about trusting what works for you instead of worrying about what others think. This is our first time checking out the bot side, and honestly, the Corky Lulu situation has been a disaster from the start. Huge red flag. AD carries often have this self-entitled attitude, which drives me crazy. They'll complain endlessly, but forget that they're part of the problem too. And let's not even get started on Yumi. Seriously, that champion should be deleted alongside Riven and Lulu. But here we are, dealing with the hardships of a questionable bot lane. The game might have a skill curve, but it seems like some players just dodge it completely with complaints and demands. If you're wondering why I'm not ganking mid as much as top, it's because mid lane champions are either painfully immobile or ridiculously mobile. Both scenarios are frustrating. Either the mid laner is glued to their second tier tower, or they're recklessly overextended with no real reason. The smartest move here would be for them to push and roam instead of diving and dying. Just when you think things couldn't get worse, here comes the Master Yi and Yumi combo. It's such a nightmare to deal with. 
especially in this game. The way they synergize is ridiculous, and honestly, there's hardly any normal counterplay in a 2 versus 2 scenario. Our best bet is to rally every possible ally we can find to tackle this situation. Since we know that the Master Yi and Yumi combo is actually even worse to face than Kaisa and Yumi, our best option is to engage strategically. In this game, it's all about capitalizing on their moments of weakness, even if it's just for a split second. We need to force them to burn their summoner spells or ultimates. This strategy buys us a significant edge in upcoming fights. Now, here's the deal with mid lane. This Ari was just terrible, practically Omega level bad, which is why Akali kept trying to dive her under tower. On the top side, we've got a solid setup, making it the perfect moment to maximize the Herald and aim for their inhibitor. Unfortunately, I've run into tons of bugs with the Herald. Sometimes it stops halfway, and other times it randomly phases through towers. Mastering Herald control is practically a skill on its own and it's especially valuable for escape since you're immune during the animation. Plus, the Herald's Charge deals true damage with a 250 damage knockup, making it essential for escaping sticky situations or securing elusive targets. The moment of truth has arrived. Yi's been stacking kills all game, and he's finally reached his ultimate demon form. At this point, we can't bring him down unless we either force out his ultimate before the fight, or group his five. Moments like this are what I call the FF moments because it can feel hopeless. Master Yi and Yumi together are an unstoppable duo, similar to the dreaded Master Yi and Tarek combo. If you give Yi any room to survive, he'll just keep stacking kills. The only way to deal with this is by focusing every ounce of damage on a single target at the perfect time. It's a tough challenge, and we'll need to find a way to make this strategy work. At this point, I was considering seeking out Master Yi in the jungle, baiting him to use his ultimate and then quickly disengaging. Unfortunately, the enemy team has figured out Yi is their win condition and is hovering around him constantly. Here's hoping our next chain of fights will be the last, bringing this game to a close. Akali made a questionable play, but it worked out. She forced the enemy to burn key ultimates, especially Yumi's and Yi's. Now's our best chance to fight. Even though we're down one player, we've got the advantage over a 5 versus 5 where everyone's ult is ready. Let me break down our win condition. It's simple but tricky. We need to force a fight without the enemy team having their ultimates available. Normally, a win condition is straightforward, but this one requires careful execution. So how do we get there? Sacrifice. Someone has to bait out their summoners or ultimates. Fake engage. Ideally, I, Volibear, or Akali should go in for a quick, Low Commitment Engage. Volibear's combo with a Q stun and shield works well here since I can back off without going all in, unlike Set, who's fully committed once he engages. It won't be easy to pull off, but the game is still within reach despite the enemy team having the edge. If we time it right, we can turn things around in the next few minutes. Sometimes I overthink things, assuming the enemy team won't make mistakes and my allies might be prone to bad calls. But of course, things never go according to plan. The enemy team is actually starting to tilt and flame each other, which gives us a huge advantage now that we have the Baron buff. Although splitting might be more efficient with Baron, we're up against Master Yi and Yumi, both of whom are risky counters if we're isolated. The best move here is to stick together. I can position a bit ahead of our team giving them the freedom to deal damage safely from behind while making it hard for the enemy to get past me. This way, we keep the pressure on and force the enemy to handle us as a group. I always emphasize that luck and skill are two totally different things, and you need a bit of both to win your games. In this match, we saw a truly awful Corky player, probably the worst on the US server, yet he's somehow very lucky. He randomly racks up kills, and right now, he just snagged a drake without any vision, basically out of thin air, which ironically works in our favor. So, what's the moral of the story? It's all about that balance. Skill keeps you relevant, but luck can help you advance in your games. Creating winnable situations has been tough since the start of this game, but at this moment, I'm 100% sure this position is highly advantageous for us. The key here is that we're setting up a tunnel where all damage will be focused on the first enemy that shows their face from the bush, which is exactly what we need even if they have their ultimates ready. As Volibear, my role is to act as a shield for the team. Unfortunately, I'm more damage-oriented than support-oriented, 
so timing my cue will be crucial for winning this fight. Thankfully, it all turned out well because the team rallied at the end and we secured the win. This wraps up the last play of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, and drop a like. I suspect I might struggle in the upcoming games because, for some reason, I've been matched with very bad players since the start. So let's hope for the best. Until the next video, take care everyone, and peace.